Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. So today's recipe is a 101 on fish, not any other fish, it's the good old classic buttered fish. Yes. And this, of course, is inspired by the English fish and chips. But this recipe is without the chips, but with an amazing mashy peas. Mm, yum. So I'm going to start off by sifting my plain flour using a sieve into a bowl. And I'm using my organic plain flour. You can use any other flour of your choosing, not a problem. Now, to that, I'm also going to add my baking powder. will allow the butter to be nice and fluffy. Now, of course, naturally, you have to add your salt to taste. And guess what? I filmed it. Yes. Next thing is I'm adding my cornstarch. And yet again, the cornstarch is going to allow this butter to be nice and fluffy. So it's a must. Now, I'll leave the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog in dudubaifafa.blogspot.com. So do check it out. Now I'm going to mix everything together till it's well combined. And guess what? The next thing I'm going to add is my freshly milled black peppercorns. Yes, you do need that most definitely to taste. So now that I've mixed everything together, I'm now going to be adding my wet ingredient. And in this case, I've got this IPA from Dale's Ford Farm. It's this organic um, farm in Oxford. It's an incredible place and it's a must visit definitely so i'm just using that but you can use your normal beer not a problem and i'm just going to be mixing this until it's well combined now the consistency that i'm looking for is a double cream consistency so you would notice i keep adding it bit by bit so at this point when i've mixed it i could tell that it's like it's still like thick and it's a little bit too thick so i will add just a little bit more of my IPA there, yes. And I've just mixed and I think this is the consistency I'm looking for. And that is right. Now, the way I'm going to test that if this consistency, it's okay, is I'm going to use a spoon. This is my own little trick. Now, if the batter sticks to the spoon and, you know, it just gradually, like, just drops off. Look, you can see, even though it's actually coming off the spoon, it still sticks to the back of the spoon. And now I've got the right consistency. So you've got that trick 101 there. Mm -hmm. So I think this is now ready for me to cover and place in the fridge. And then I'd use it the next day. I mean, you can just let it rest for a couple of hours and you're fine. But it's important to allow this mixture to rest. And now let's move on to the fish. So today I will be using my line cut cod that I got from Sainsbury's. Now, if you're going to be using any fish, make sure that it's sustainably caught. Absolutely. And I have transferred that to my plate. Now, what I'm going to do is add some salt. And the reason why I'm adding salt, because I don't necessarily add salt to fish because it extracts the moisture out of it. But I do need to extract the moisture out of the fish um, before I fry it to make sure that I get that perfect battered fish. And I've also used my kitchen napkin in, you know, absorbing any excess moisture out of the fish. Now to my asanka or my earthen clay bowl with my internal ridges, I've transferred some plain flour, salt and black peppercorn, freshly milled, of course. And I'm just going to mix everything together because I am going to be tossing my cod in there. So you can use your tilapia, you can use any fish of your choosing, sea bass, sea bream, whatever fish you prefer, absolutely. Haddock, whatever, as I said, yes. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to toss my cod pieces in there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is multitask. Gosh, I was messy on that one, wasn't I, on that front? But hey, ho, it's in doo-doo by Fafana <laughs> So toss your cod in your seasoned flour until it's well covered, as you can tell. Now, if your butter is in the fridge, this is the point that you remove it and leave it so it comes up to room temperature. 
Now the next thing is I'm going to tackle my mashy peas. So I've got my good old normal frozen peas, um, which is readily available in most supermarkets anyway. I've transferred that to a bowl. Now what I then tend to do is pour hot water over it. Yes, and I cover it and I seal that steam in there and leave it for about five to seven minutes. And that indirect heat cooks my peas perfectly and it retains the color as well and makes it crunchy absolutely so now to my wok i um, added my preferred oil you can use any oil of your choosing for frying because we're going to be deep frying the bad girl you know what i mean yes absolutely so if you do have a fryer this is the time that you do heat up your fryer absolutely now the next thing is i want to make sure that my oil is perfectly hot so in the absence of a thermometer what i tend to use i mean i do have a thermometer but i also like this rocket action so i do cut the end bit of my spring onion and i drop it in and you can just tell that look it's rocketed itself i think at this point i was just watching i'm like yeah i know the oil is hot but i'm just liking this i'm watching this thing go round and round but of course before we start frying we have to make sure that we've got everything in place you know what i mean so that when immediately you start frying it's bish bash bosh and it's done so yeah let's start so multitasking so i'm back with the fish again so of course i'm just tossing it in the fly and i'm just going to shake off any excess flour now the next thing is i'm going to drop that into the batter I'm going to toss that beautiful fish in that amazing flavor packed fluffy butter. This is so easy, but it might look daunting, but provided you just follow the steps that I've gone through with you, you should be fine. So I toss this in this butter. I left it up to allow any excess butter to drip and then I toss it again. So I do this about two or three times and then just allow the excess butter to drop as you can see here. So once that's done, I think that my rocket onion can come out. Definitely, it's done its job. And now I'm going to fry the fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip. Once the excess butter's um, dripped off, I'm going to actually place the tip of the fish in the oil first, as you can see, for a few seconds before I lay down. That just allows the butter to form just perfectly. And you just watch right in front of your eyes that the fish will just rise to the top. You see, now that's when you know you do have a good butter. Look at that magic. This is not any other food. This is in Dubai for Fakkeche. Yes, absolutely. We're tackling the good old English battered fish. And chips with other chips, but with mashy peas. Not just any other mashy peas. The mashy peas that's packed with natural flavors. Now, so then, okay, me, me, look at me, Ah, me, I love food. Ah, I love good food. You know, the other day, one of my friends um, came visiting and um, I'd made some coconut macaroons. And she was like, oh, did you buy this? I was like, no. She goes like, gosh, so what? Why did you make it? I was like, because I felt like having something sweet. She goes like, why can't you just go and buy one? I was like, why should I buy one when I can make it? And I know how to make it. You see? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyway, so right before your eyes, you know, do not at any point turn the heat down because immediately you turn that heat down, this fish is going to drink the oil and that's not what you want. You know, you want that butter to be nice and crusty on the outside and that um, heat indirectly would just cook the fish in the middle perfectly. And I just know that my fish is ready. Look at this. Look at this. It's crunchy and it's just beautiful and golden. After six minutes of frying, that is three minutes on each side, you end up with this beauty. Now let's reveal the peas because this is multitasking. Now let's look at this. Beautiful. It's retained its color. 
it looks great. Let me just dip a spoon in so I can just give you that. Yes, that's it. It's nice and plump and I'm just going to drain the water off my peas. So here we have it and I'm just going to reserve this whilst I come back to it because I'm going to make a sauce. Now I have placed my saucepan on medium heat and it's been heating up for about a minute. Now there's a reason for it because I'm making a set. Yes, which is like a burnt butter. Yeah, because I need that nutty flavor. And I've just dropped that butter in, as you can tell. And you can just see it's just gone all brown and nice. Next thing is, I'm just going to add my finely diced or chopped onions. Yes. So I've got the nutty and I've also got this beautiful sweetness that the onion is going to add to my dish. And I'm just going to mix everything together till it's well combined. And you can tell the butter is still melting. So you've got this nutty flavor, but it's also getting creamy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crush some garlic. Yes, so I've got three cloves of garlic. And as I mentioned, I'll leave the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog in dudubaifafat.blogspot.com, so do check it out. And I'm just going to mix everything together till it's well combined. I'm just going to reduce this heat whilst I then tend to my mashy peas. But of course, I've added my salt to taste, which is important. Now, yeah, please, no, don't have a go at my bijou asanka. Yeah, I know it's bijou, and I'm just going to be mashing this in my asanka. Um, alternatively, you know, you can't just use any masher for this. I don't want this to be, like, really mashed and, like, smooth. I need it textured. Ah, oh, look at that. I've just eaten that pea. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy this. I find this quite therapeutic, you know. Um, yeah. So now that I have my coarsely mashed or textured peas, may I say, I'm adding my buen musette that I fried some onions and garlic in. And I'm just going to mix this beauty together. I love this. This is flavor packed. You see? Ah, I'm just taking confidence of the dish of fish and chips, you know, without the chips, of course. And, um, I'm just enjoying my favorite part of it, which is my mashy peas and then the fish. Now, of course, I'm going to, you know, chop some fresh mint and add that. And that's just so beautiful. Now, I think I'm going to do some kitchen in terms of assembling this dish. So I've got my bowl here, as you do, and I'm going to spread my textured peas to the bottom of it. But I'm going to make a well because when I have fish, there's this thing that I do love to enjoy with my fish, which is my horseradish sauce. Now, the horseradish sauce is readily available in most supermarkets. And the flavor, because it's part of the ginger family, the flavor is a mix between ginger and wasabi, may I say, yes. And one mixes it with some cream or some mayonnaise, and it's just beautiful. So yes, and I like to place it in the middle of the well, yes, because it's a surprise. Because when one actually sees this, you just feel it's like normal fish, you know, battered fish with your mashy peas. Oh no, you break into that, look how nice and crusty that is. And guess what? You end up with a surprise horseradish in the middle, because you wouldn't be expecting that flavor, and that would just explode in your mouth. Now look at this. Let's look at this beauty. How the fish is so moist. Look, it's just breaking off just nicely. Look at that. It's not any other food. It's in Dudu by Fa Fa. Look at that. And num Allah. We da. We na una lo. Lo, lo hips gay shape now i hope i have given you that reason to click the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet and the notification button now i'd leave the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog in dudubaifafa.blogspot.com so do check it out i'm on facebook instagram twitter and snapchat as in dudubaifafa so do pass by and say hi norel thank you very much for my theme song and until next time until my next recipe which is going to be incredible by the way yeah, take care of you, be nice, be beautiful, and I love you for you. Don't forget to be kind. <laughs>